Why am I unhappy? First is the I. The second is unhappy. And in my opinion, or you, you can say from my perspective, both of them do not exist. Both of them are mental constructs. Both of them are illusory imagination. So, yes, that, that is again, you see, just a description of the ignorance. So, there is no separate I which is unhappy. There is no me who can get unhappy. This is the first thing to know. And uh, once you see that there is no separate self which has um, this kind of uh, state of unhappiness, then the question disappears. Now, what are you asking? <laughs> there is no, no I and no unhappiness. So, nothing to ask about. So, this is a very refined state, as you can see. And this requires the knowledge of the self. This requires the introspection, self-inquiry, to know what is my essence, what is the essence of the I. And once, that, once it is seen that there is no separate I, there is no, no separate self or individual who can be happy or are unhappy, then the question will be dropped. The answer will not come. Don't worry. <laughs> there is no answer. Because the answer is to that which exists. If something does not exist, there is no answer to that. The question is seen as invalid question. The question is seen as coming out of ignorance. So, I am 100% sure that this answer is not going to benefit anyone. So, let us see. And let us assume that there is an I. There is a separate self, individual or a person. We can say it is the body and the mind. Let us, you know, give a concession, drop down into the illusion, one step, because the person is probably, you see, will not understand the ultimate, which I just said. Uh, so, let us assume it is true that there is a person, an individual there, defined by the body and the mind, whatever goes on in the body and the mind, and uh, he is unhappy, he or she. Now, what is unhappiness? And like Mukul said, it is unfulfilled desires. We expect some desire to be fulfilled. It is not fulfilled. What happens? The state of the mind changes from desiring to disappointment. That is unhappiness. That is the illusory answer. But you can, I don't need to tell it again and again. You can understand this, that we are talking from the perspective of an ignorant a separate self. So that is the unhappiness. You will find that this is our, there is the mind, our inner space. In that mind are desires. They appear. I do not choose my desires. Let us start from here. Start from this internal scene, the introspection. Look, who is choosing the desires? The desires appear first. Then I say, I say it in my mind that I desire isn't it? This is the, this is my direct experience. And uh, what do we do then? The desires are motivating force. They pu push the body into action. So we run to fulfill that desire. It can be a small desire to go and eat something, you see. It can be a big desire to rule the planet. <laughs> something like this, you know, it can be anything. And uh, the desire is a motivating force. You can define the desire like this. Intention. That the word tension says that it is tending to, it is pulling you, internal tension. And another word is desire. Wish and expectation is kind of a desire. We want something to happen in a specific way. That, that is a desire. And uh, then the body runs to fulfill it. Where else will you fulfill your desire if not in the world? Imagine if you could fulfill all your desire in your mind. Wouldn't it be like heavenly? Probably that is heaven only. So, and the individual assumes that the fulfillment of my desire lies in the world. So, where else can he run? Isn't it? Our waking state is the world. That is all we know. <laughs> we run into the world. We run after objects, people, achievements, situations, whatever, to fulfill that which appeared in the mind from nowhere. And uh, you will find something funny that 
I also have a delusion that I am in the control and I can fulfill it. My actions are going to fulfill the desire. Now, you see, desire, expectation and this feeling of being in control and plus the illusion of free will that it is my desire, I desired it. So, and I'm in the control, I'll fulfill it. This is a recipe of disaster. Can you, <laughs> can you see? This is, a, you know, you mix many, many acids and chemical in the chemistry lab and what can you expect? It is like that, you know, you expect a big explosion. Suffering, unhappiness is this disaster, that's all. That is the good definition of unhappiness. If you want to know what is unhappiness, I cannot tell you what is happiness, isn't it? Can I tell you what is happiness? Have you ever experienced happiness? No, never. You only experience this, you know, violent combustion of chemicals. Things that happen in the mind, in the world. Have you ever experienced anything else? Because you have experienced the bliss, but you call it sleep. You call it inactivity. <laughs> you find it boring. The individual does not like it. So, so much so that we completely ignore it. It does not exist. The happiness does not exist for an individual. The individual is a name for misery. Take misery, take individual, one thing, you see. That's why we say the ego is miserable. You see, Eckhart Tolle calls it the pain body. Among all things, <laughs> he chose the word pain to describe it. Yes, it is a pain, actually. That, that is what it is doing. Can you see? We get up from the bed because of a desire. Did you get up from the bed that I'll not do nothing today? I'll just sit. I'll remain in the deep sleep today. Did it happen? No. Individual is born as soon as it is out of the bed. It is as soon as the activity of the mind starts. The individual starts. This is one more thing to introspect. See it. Wake up very, very slowly one morning. If you do that, you will find that initially there is no individual. There is just mental activity. Then the desires start. The intentions start appearing. And the individual is born because the I thought appears, oh, my desires. And this sansar starts, the wheel turns. This happens every day. This, this is happening since many, many years. This is happening since many, many ages. You don't even know it. <laughs> this is what we call as the cycle of birth and that's the sansaric activity of the mind. And the mind is not my mind. This is now something big. So, and there is a bigger cycle here. We, uh, waking up and uh, going to sleep is a smaller cycle of, it corresponds to the bigger cycle of dying and taking birth. So, you can now suspect that we are born to fulfill some desires. Now, don't give it a name that I am born to, you know, marry and have children. Or I am born here to rule this country, to become a big, you know, big shot or something. Or I am born here to serve humanity. No. These are not the real desires. There are germs of the desires. Well, into which I am not going to go today. That is called latent desires also. Or we, we call it latent impressions also. And that the Sanskrit word is sanskar for that. It is not a desire that can be stated in words. If you are in the yogic practices... If you are, uh, you know, diving deep into the mind, you can actually see the latent desires. You can see them. And because they are latent, they, they will need to be pushed into a little bit of action. And you can bring, you can see their face a little bit. And probably it will be very difficult to um, put them into any kind of language because the language that we, are, we use is of the waking state. When the desire is full-blown manifested here, it is right here in my mind. We can use a language to describe it. What is the desire? What is the root desire? The root desire, the basic desire is to be happy. Can you see? What are we desiring? I want this, I want it. No, 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 no. We, we are desiring happiness. And just like I said, you cannot get it. There is no such thing as happiness. The happiness that you experience sometimes is because of the absence of these desires. This is another thing to introspect about. When were you most happy? When your desires were gone, when the desires were fulfilled, you wanted nothing. That is then expressed as laughter, smiles, 
um, joy, pleasure, dance, song, party, who knows what. So you want that, isn't it? And when this is not there, you say, I am unhappy, I am miserable, I am suffering. So desires or the, this motive forces are present, expectations are present, hopes are present, and this delusion of control is present. These all combine to um, form a situation which we call unhappiness, dukkh. That's why Gautam Buddha said, Sansar is the dukkh. <laughs> well, this birth, this world is suffering. This is how we are, he arrived at this conclusion, you see. Do not think that one day he sat down below a tree and concluded willy-nilly, oh, the world is a kind of boring place, full of suffering. No, he did not simply see the dying man and old man and the beggar. And No, no, no. That started the, his journey. See how deep this insight is. It took me 15 minutes to explain it in short, but it is very, very deep. It can be found through your own experience of what happens in the mind. Can somebody tell you that you are unhappy, that the, the world is uh, suffering, that uh, there is no happiness? Can, can Will you believe somebody blindly? Can you believe me? No. Only if I take you like this step by step to the conclusion. Look, the, the activity of the mind is responsible for what you think is unhappiness. There, there's no, that is your, the answer to your question. Why am I happy? Why, why am I unhappy? You never ask this, why am I happy? <laughs> you always, when something goes wrong, then only you question, isn't it? So suffering is a big teacher, isn't it? Suffering is our guru. It's a good thing. Without suffering, you will never learn anything. That's why I said, you see, if our desires are fulfilled like this, it would be a heavenly experience. And if you don't believe me, don't believe. But there are these states of the mind, there are places in the universal mind where exactly the same thing happens. What you, whatever you desire is right there in front of you. And people call it heaven. What happens there is that the jeev is trapped in fulfilling endless desires. Because they are infinite. Activity of the mind cannot be stopped. All the activity is appearance of desires only, intentions and desires. Right now, you can assume like this, you see, don't make it so complicated. And uh, you can achieve that st state where there is instant fulfillment of desire only in the mind. It is called heaven and the uh, jeev or the, uh, this uh, bundle of uh, memories that is engaged in this kind of activity is called a god or a deity, uh, ascended master or something like this. So now, without going into the detail, this activity that is happening right now is activity of a greater mind. You can explore like this if you are interested. That is not going to end your suffering. That is not going to end the misery. Because the mind is impermanent and the heavenly states, they do not last. And we say that the mind falls. And it finds in this kind of itself in this kind of world again, again in the sansar, again trapped in this uh, wheel of desires. They are infinite, so it, it goes on and on and you don't know how many, how many, how much time has passed. You are doing only this. There is no time in absolute sense. So, well, you understand now <laughs> how deep this question is. Uh, but don't worry, there is a solution. If you get rid of the activity of the mind, th that is the end of the suffering. Now you will say, tell me, tell me the formula to get rid of the activity of the mind. You will say, the me is also mind. You will need to know your true nature. That which is witnessing all this madness, all this activity, chitvritti, you cannot stop it. Some people interpret Patanjali like, you know, nirodh means stopping. And nirodh means many things. Actually, I was going through a book which is a commentary of Vyas on um, Patanjali uh, and also some uh, side notes by Vachaspati Mishra. Now, these uh, names must be familiar to those who are deep into the text in Sanskrit literature. And I found something very interesting that Vyasa has a little bit of different kind of interpretation of Patanjali. It is kind of interesting. Those who are interested in the yoga philosophy or Sankhya philosophy. Knowing 
yourself is not going to stop the activity of the mind union with whatever is not going to stop the activity of the mind the union of the shiv and shakti not going to stop it almost guaranteed that's why we have the shakti worshipers they know this very well shakti is what activity of the mind nothing else so shiv is what shiv is you shivoham i am the consciousness i am the dark one black one which cannot be seen <laughs> you see and uh, shakti is that whatever is manifested whatever can be seen in any form um, do not expect the mind to stop you see do not interpret the nirod as disappearance of the mind no mind there is no such thing the activity will never stop but don't worry there is a way out of it that is called this identification i am not this activity what is the major activity of the mind production of the misery so i am not this i am not unhappy what am i i am pure bliss I am absence of all these activities. I am that which witnesses all these things, and therefore these qualities, these activities, do not happen to me. They happen in me. They I experience them, but not as myself. This identification. And then what happens? Will it get rid of suffering, misery? No. Don't be so happy. Don't be so quick. Uh, slow detachment happens with the mind. very slow process may take few lifetimes and then the mind is freed from the activity uh, i'm sorry the uh, the um, jeev is freed from the activity it is uh, liberated individual and the liberation of the individual is uh, disappearance of the boundaries of the individual no more individual you can see that it is right now like this you can see it like this they right now also there is no individual and right now also the states of the mind including all the unhappy states they do not belong to me not mine this is only due to identification it is not going to change the mind instantly it takes a lot of time for it to give up the activity there are three kinds of activities that are identified in advait and the first is you all you know all those you see the tamas rajas and sattva tamas is uh, that uh, you you have a negative kind of mind lazy mind ignorant mind you see stupid mind and most of the activities avoiding the activity that's all it does tamas very dark state of the mind and rajas is exactly opposite a very active mind very bright mind very intelligent mind the go getter you see successful person that is the rajasic mind satvik is the balanced mind about which i am not going to say a lot but it involves the detachment it involves the disidentification with both tamas and rajas that is the sattva this is how we classify the activity of the mind in advait at least and patanjali has his own way he has he he has five kinds of activities there <laughs> you go and read it is very very interesting very interesting how people have approached this um uh, problem from so many ways they have found so many solutions and ultimately if all boils down that i am not the mind i am not this activity any kind of activity i am not it even the satvic activity i am not it but the goal of the yogi or gani is to arrive at the sattva at the balance because we know it's not going to end so balance it a little bit let, let the pendulum not swing too much you see let it just vibrate at one place this is what the hermetic teachings or will also say very very close to vedic teachings and uh, how to do that how to have a satvic mind <laughs> and there are many ways and uh, ashtang yoga is one which is proposed by patanjali and path of knowledge is one where complete disidentification and then you let the mind do whatever it does uh, uh, you are always in the blissful state which is called samadhi there is a way of gautam bud which is um, his own way the middle way so uh, it, it it will it will not be possible for me to get into uh, long discussions about this but he but here your path starts isn't it suffering has brought you to here now it's all open for you choose any path and get rid of the suffering don't worry it's not your suffering <laughs> these are states of the mind corresponding to the waking state and just purify the mind do your best 
I'm not guaranteeing that the mind will become a happy mind. You are happiness. Mind is not happiness, you see. I am the bliss. I am the Anand. I am the Satchitanand. 